Hey, Shazam15 here. Now, I go to the cinema a lot, and I figured I would do a little vlog about the films I've seen, giving you a critical geek's review of the films as they come out. Now, last week I went to see Transformers Dark Side of the Moon, and as a, fa as a fan of the original Transformers, and who's watched pretty much all of them, at some, to some extent, most of them bored me, I would rate it akin to Beast Machines. There's a few good references to the original, but overall, it's rather naff. It's the hiring of Leonard Nimoy, for example, for one joke which fell flat on its ass. Absolutely no delivery to that one. I didn't like the fact that they once again reinvented the origin storyline what was wrong with the one from Five Faces of Darkness in the original series. I quite liked that one, it meant the Autobots had a questionable morality. Now, the introduction of Soundwave was a nice touch. Shame about the giant worm. Shockwave is a good character. He was ultimately the strongest Decepticon in the original series, having held Cybertron in a stalemate for millions of years. Then within 40 years of Galvatron, of Megatron turning up... <coughs> now, the reintroduction of Soundwave, nice, shame he just had Laserbeak. I would have much preferred to also see Buzz Bomb, Rumble, Ra Rumble, Ravage, Frenzy, that would have been nice, but oh well, and there's no blaster, so... Soundwave's not as useful as he could be. Now, the plot line, interesting, but ultimately not very transformery, let's be honest here. It was more a cheap action hero plot with giant robots thrown in for all factor. It was essentially like trying to watch a Japanese manga, which really didn't work. Um, right, what else was there to talk about? I didn't like the fact that they added blood. Well, I say blood, essentially they threw in red goo that came out when you damaged Transformers, which essentially seems entirely there just to up the gore factor, which, quite frankly, in my general rule, the more gore, less storyline. It's a balance. You've got to get it right. And quite frankly, Michael Bay didn't. Once again, with the trans once again, with the Leonard Nimoy thing, do you think Michael Bay is trying to piss everyone off? I mean, what's going on there? Okay, the other thing that gets me, and this is just a personal thing, because, once again, fan of the original series, what's the deal with the idea of making Primer rank? I know this is from the previous film, but it's a point that should be brought up, because you have another Prime in this one, you got Sentinel Prime. In the original series, the reason why Prime is called Prime... Optimus Prime is not because he's the leader, because, okay, that sort of makes sense when you factor in Optimus Prime, but the original reason why he's called Prime is he's the first of the line of Autobot defenders. When he's turned from Orion Pax into Auto Optimus Prime, he's the leader of the male Autobot defenders. When his girlfriend is turned into a leader one, that makes her the leader of the female Autobot defenders. You've got to remember that this was a good storyline. It really fleshed out who the Autobots and the Decepticons were, and made them cousin races, not the same species. And that was a nice touch. I like that. But, once again, been trodden over for the sake of, oh, that's complicated. You can't put complicated things in Transformers. No, no, no. It's bad enough they've taken the morals out of 80s cartoons, but that's just me who has a deal with that, although I do have friends who agree with me on this one. Anyway, enough rambling. Basically, it wasn't great. I know of, I know the layperson's like, ooh, special effects, big robots, ooh, but from a geek perspective, especially one who's an old school Transformers fan. <laughs> anyway, have fun. Catch you later. I'm hopefully reviewing something else this week.